Yeah, and you know, they're not alone. I, I think the issue is that regulators really don't have enough people or enough funds to go after everybody who is in this non-bank banking business. So what they're doing is they're focusing on a handful of the biggest. I think you're going to see more and more of these shadow bankers pulling away from the business as the scrutiny heats up. Chris Lowe is Chief Economist at STM Financial in New York. Chris, thanks so much. You're welcome. GE stock is up about 8% right now, and trading is underway, so let's take a look at some other numbers. And they are mixed this morning. The Dow is pretty flat, down only slightly. The S&P is up a tenth of a percent, and the NASDAQ is down just a little. The path that leads from training for a job to landing a job can be arduous. LinkedIn, a professional social network, hopes to profit by guiding job seekers. The company has bought an online learning site called lynda.com for $1.5 billion. Lynda's videos teach workplace technical skills like Photoshop and coding. LinkedIn says the purchase will help it connect job seekers with jobs. Marketplace's Nova Sasso has the story. Lynda.com, a place you go for those online video courses on lots of uh, exciting topics. Welcome to Excel 2013 tips and tricks. Nothing not exciting, but perhaps useful. Whether you need to create formulas quickly, create charts in a flash, you can save time by learning some of the tips in this course. Useful if you're in the charts creating business or interested in photography or coding, and useful in terms of LinkedIn's goals. This is in cradle to grade, or this is diploma to retirement. Mark Mahaney of RBC Capital Markets says LinkedIn has a broad strategic ambition to build up kind of the entire ecosystem around training, job recruitment, hiring, talent development. But the acquisition also has pitfalls for LinkedIn, says Colin Gillis of BGC Partners. You're paying one and a half billion dollars to a business that is a subscription business and may come into pressure from free sites such as YouTube. But Gillis says Linda.com and LinkedIn should be able to compete on quality, if not on price. I'm Nova Sato, for Marketplace. Marketplace Market Report is supported by the Tell. The Tell's NeuroBridge technology is helping a paralyzed man to move again. Learn more at thetell.org. And by Chronos, with cloud-based workforce management solutions designed for organizations to maximize their most valued asset, their workforce. Chronos.com. Chronos, workforce innovation that works. And by the Weinstein Company's new film, Woman in Gold, based on the true story of a woman stopping at nothing to get what was taken from her family by the Nazis, starring Helen Mirren and Brian Reynolds, now playing. We all know that California is grappling with a historic drought, but in the U.S., we often take for granted that our drinking water is very cheap and very easy to come by. For much of the world, that isn't the case. In Mexico, for example, it can be cheaper to buy a soda than a bottle of water. And the Mexican government is worried about the consequences for public health. Annie Mueller sent us this report. When I walk into a small restaurant next to the bus stop for lunch in the border town of Nuevo Laredo, almost every table has four or five soda bottles on it. Now, this isn't a big restaurant, less than 20 tables. And I ask my waiter, how many sodas do you think they sell every day? Yeah. My understanding is that we sell about 100 cokes every day. Between bottles and cans. It's because the people just enjoy the flavor. His customers aren't alone. The Mexican population drinks more soda than anywhere else in the world. The numbers say folks drink about 160 liters of the sugary stuff a year, or about half a liter per person every day. Jose Luis Quinones drinks a lot of soda. He drives a cab at Monterey. He says when he leaves for work in the morning, he wants to grab something quick. What's the cheapest thing I can buy? He asks. A can of soda and some crackers. It's cheaper to buy a soda than a bottle of water. So why is that the case? It could be that poor Mexicans just don't have the purchasing power to create a viable market for agua. That's certainly the case in a lot of rural parts of the country, where more than 10% of people don't have access to potable water. But for some reason, they can always grab a soda. Tom Wiki is a senior fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations. It's a combination of something that costs the same price as water, it's uh, more accessible in, in schools frequently in Mexico, and it's sweet. And that combination is, is literally deadly. Deadly indeed. It leads to obesity. The Mexican government is now trying to do something about it. Late last year, the government passed the soda tax. They even started running ads urging children to drink water instead of soda. 
the number of pieces, the way they're using money is just as important. There are new markets for raising access to drinking water in, in elementary schools. It'll still take a while to see how well this tax and ads work. The early numbers look pretty good, while still high. Soda consumption in Mexico this year is already down 7%. I'm Amy Hewler for Marketplace. Last up, Bloomberg reports that the IRS is facing a bit of a staffing problem. Of 87,000 IRS employees, only about 3% are under the age of 30. Half are over 50. The IRS director says the agency is facing a baby bust. They're not going to start attracting younger workers soon. In New York, I'm Noel King with the Marketplace Morning Report. Wisconsin Public Radio, where there's more news on Saturday and Sunday. The weekend edition from 7 to 9 a.m., and weekend all things considered from 4 to 5 on both days. Or you can hear those programs on demand with the free WPR app. Support for WPR comes from contributing members. 50,000 individuals and families in Wisconsin and beyond who invest in WPR's diverse schedule of news, music, talk, and entertainment programs. Thank you.